Well, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. the invite. I'm excited. So uh, would you like to introduce yourself and we'll kind of get started there? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Brandon Black. I am the photographer behind Black Line Photography. Um, resident of Huntsville for the last three years now. Okay. And uh, prior to that, I was living in Texas. Okay. So is, is, is Texas where you're originally from or kind of what was the journey to get here to Huntsville three years ago? No. Nah, so Virginia is, is where I'm originally from. Grew up in Northern Virginia. I went to school at Blacksburg, Virginia Tech. Okay. And then uh, moved to Richmond for 10 years. Richmond, Virginia, and then to Texas for almost eight years before coming here. Okay. So came here for the wife. Okay. Yeah, her, <laughs> she's from here. Her family's from here. Yeah. So it just made sense to move back this way. Yeah. How has the uh, three years living in Huntsville been? As I, I think, I mean, most people I talk to on the podcast, most people I talk to in general aren't Huntsville natives. So what has your experiences been like, you know, living in maybe some bigger cities and living in Texas and all of that prior to here? Have you enjoyed being in Huntsville the last three years? And do you see yourself kind of, you know, staying here for the, for the foreseeable future? Yeah, no, it's actually been really nice. Um, I was coming to Huntsville back and forth for a few years. Um, that's actually how I met my wife. And so I'd gotten to know the town a little bit and really enjoyed the vibe, how small it's a small town, but big city feel a little yeah. bit. Like you actually have things like the sports teams and the concerts, and especially now with the Orion, you know, you're getting a lot of the features that a larger city would have, but sort of that small town feel, Yeah, which I prefer. <laughs> um, and so it's been a really nice transition a lot to offer around here. Um, getting out to Bankhead and some of the surrounding yeah. areas has been a lot of fun uh, getting to explore. So yeah, it's it's been a good transition. So how has photography kind of impacted your life? So it's, is, is it something that you kind of got into in it later in life or is it something that you've always had a passion for as you were growing up? You know, as a young adult, I always had a camera. Whenever I go on vacations, I was always taking pictures, but never did anything with them. Didn't really just knew I liked taking pictures. I'd see something that would catch my eye, take the photograph. And so it was just sit on my computer, never knew what to do mm -hmm. with it. Just there, I liked taking the photographs. Um, in about 2015, when I was living in Texas. I met a friend of mine from the gym and he was a photographer. He dabbled a little bit of landscapes and nightscapes, uh, did some portrait work, but he was a photographer and we got to talking. He was, hey, I'd really like to, to learn a little bit if you wouldn't mind taking me out with you and yeah. let's, let's go shoot. Cause at the time he was really big into the night photography and that, that really sparked my interest. Um, and so I sold off all my old equipment, bought some new entry level mirrorless camera from Sony and, uh, was off to the races with him. Wow. And so as you started kind of getting into that photography and kind of, you know, like helping your friend out with it and kind of figuring out like what this would look like, uh, when was that first opportunity to sell a piece of your art? And like, do you remember what piece of art or what piece of photography you actually sold, uh, to that person? Yeah. So once he kind of took me out, I started diving into YouTube, looking at tutorials, trying to learn as much as I could soak up as much as I could tinker on the computer working with the post-processing part of it. Cause that was probably the biggest challenge is mm -hmm. obviously I could take a picture. Anybody can take a picture, but it's that back end processing work that really you hone your craft nowadays for digital, digital photography. And so I kind of got down that road. We started going out shooting more and more. And my first photograph I sold was actually uh, it's an image from the Hay street bridge in San Antonio looking towards downtown. You got the Alamo brewery on the bottom left of the frame with Alamo written out, rolling mm -hmm. out. Um, and then you can see the city skyline in the background. And so it was a black and white I did. And I remember selling it to one of my coworkers. Okay. Um, cause they knew I was getting into it and taking pictures. And so they kind of wanted to see some, what I had. And somebody was like, Hey, do you have a, a printer that I could buy? And I was like, huh? I was like, no, but give me a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. Let me see what I can figure out for you. And so most of my first sales were coworkers. Then friends started inquiring a little bit and it was just kind of like one offs here and there. And for the first four years, I really wasn't doing anything with it. Just selling a few prints, made a few extra dollars and, and that's where it stopped. Um, but about the four, so I've been doing this about eight years now, about four years ago is when I really was like, you know what? I think I could probably do, make this a business. And at the time it was like, if I could just kind of offset some travel costs for my trips and uh, help buy some equipment, some gear, I was like, I, that's fine. Yeah. Like I'd be good with that. Right. Um, and so converted to business and officially became an LLC in 20, early 2021 while living in Texas. Okay. And so when did, uh, was the name black lion photography, something that you always had like an, in the back of your head that you're going to do, or is it once you started that LLC and actually was, you know, going to put this on pen and paper and say, Hey, this is a legitimate business. Here's this business that I've now created. Did that name then come up then, or did you already have it in the back of your head? So no, it was, I think I've been thinking on it for a couple of years before we finally decided to turn it into an LLC. And 
obviously black, my last name, mm -hmm. um, lion, it had been bouncing around in my head and, you know, for a number of years I was getting tattoos and whatnot and the lion had meant something to me and I was, I was bouncing around the idea. I was like, well, maybe I can incorporate it into the business somehow. And so I started tinkering a little bit and discussing with the wife and was like, how can we make this work? And black lion just, just came fit. out of that. Yeah. yeah. I just kind of fed out of that. And, uh, that's what I went with. Yeah. So as, as you made the move here, uh, three years ago to Huntsville, how has the growth of the photography business, uh, got, gone, especially with, as Huntsville is continuing to grow over the last three years, you've been here more and more events and more and more things you've probably been able to be a part of. What does that exposure look like here in the Huntsville market? It, it has grown exponentially for the last few years for me. I know when we first moved here, um, I had never done a market, hadn't been out. Most of my sales were friends, family, mm. uh, coworkers just people who knew I did it, knew I was selling on the side and, and would inquire. Uh, when we came here, wife and I kind of sat down that summer um, and we're like, you know what, maybe now's the time. Like maybe we take that leap of mm -hmm. faith and obviously I know my artwork sells and that's the biggest test for any photographer, painter, or whatever. Does your product sell? Do people have an interest mm -hmm. in your artwork? If they don't, well, there's no point in going forward, right? It's just more for your enjoyment, but I knew my art sold you know, would sell. And so we decided to make the leap and, and start testing out the, the art shows around town and, uh, started off with, you know, some events like low mill, their, their weekly market or their, you know, monthly market and, um, looked into some other events, um, downtown art walk. Uh, I know we were part of their first, uh, the Friday night, the alley downtown okay. in the alley. Uh, we started that with them when they first started that event. And that was kind of our first real major, I guess, inroads into, Huntsville, the downtown community and getting seen uh, by the community. And so, yeah, it's just kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. And so you, you talked a little bit about kind of the, your, your style of photography has kind of grown. You, you, you do a variety of different sort of like from landscapes to, to, to a variety of other things. Talk a little bit about kind of as, as you've developed into this craft of, of, of being a photographer, how your style and what you typically shoot has kind of evolved with you. Sure. So initially I got into photography because of the night photography, um, there's, there's nothing quite like going out under the night sky away from light pollution and being able to look up and see the Milky Way galaxy mm. kind of puts things in perspective about how small and insignificant we really are. And it's kind of cliche, but it's true. Mm. Like when you look up and you see our galaxy above us and you're just like, I'm a speck of dust in this whole process. Right. And so I still enjoy it. That's my biggest passion is going out and shooting the night sky. And so that's kind of what started it, but then landscapes. And I much prefer going out into nature, getting away from the hustle and bustle, the city life, and just kind of reconnecting. It's a chance for me to recharge my batteries a little bit. And so it, that's what brought me the peace, the joy. I enjoy going out sometimes with some friends, but a lot of times it's by myself. And it's just a chance for me to reconnect. And so the landscapes is... I can be out in nature and just enjoy the experience and not really worry about the back end. Mm -hmm. um, Cause the byproduct of selling my product, selling my artwork is just an avenue for me to continue to do what I enjoy doing. And that's not my end goal when I'm taking a photograph or I'm going out somewhere. It's, it's not thinking about, well, how do I sell this image? Mm -hmm. Not my focus. My focus is how can I capture an image that I can share with people that they're going to get as much enjoyment as I am out of this moment. Right. And so the landscapes, <clears throat> You notice my artwork is very colorful. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy vibrant colors and I take a little artistic liberty in enhancing some of those sometimes, but that's my style. And I, I, I want it to be an art piece. Um, and so I think as I've gone along in, in my career, more and more, I'm trying to create those artistic pieces that it tells a story, but it's also visually captivating to somebody where the, they see it and they know it's not just a simple photograph. There's more to it. Right. Um, and especially my night photography, I get asked a lot, well, can I go out there and see that? <laughs> I'm like, no, I mean, yes and no. Right. You can go out to that location and you'll see the Milky way. It's black and white, mm -hmm. the camera sensor and the way I do the photograph, you know, take the photographs and the long exposures and then the editing process on the back end. That's what brings that photograph to light to life. That's what gives you the color, the vibrancy, the detail. And so, I kind of amplify that a little bit. And so that's more the craft on the back in the last couple of years is really honing the editing, the post-processing part of that mm. and, and really work on 
having a seamless top to bottom image that works well color wise. You're not having a color a foreground is really warm with a sky that's really cool, right? Because yeah. you want that flow in an image. And so for me, the last few years, it's really honing that processing part of the craft to make sure that the image flows. Mm. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by V Renee Consulting. Do you know the real cost of not having a clear marketing strategy? It's missed opportunities, wasted time, and lost revenue. At V Renee Consulting, we work with business owners just like you to design marketing systems that save time and deliver results. Stop missing out on potential clients. Visit vrene.com now and find out how we can help you attract your ideal customers and grow your business. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors that helped make this podcast possible. Now back to the episode. Yeah. And as I think the, the first time we, uh, like, I think I've been following you for a little bit on Instagram prior to actually formally meeting you. Um, but we were at the art walk, my wife and I were, and we, 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 we stopped in and we, we found some artwork of places that we'd gone to travel, which is, which was a really cool thing. Cause it's, you know, like as, as we were flipping through them, uh, the locations on the back yep. and so like we're flipping and we see something and we're like, Oh, that looks like it's, 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 it looks like it's the Matterhorn in Zermont. And it's like, ah, oh, it probably is not. Yeah. And we like flip it around and we're like, no, no, it's exactly what it is. And we're like, and then we see like other, other options for that same photo. Yep. And so we're, we're then kind of like picking and choosing what we want to see or what we like more and like the size we want and all of that. And then we started flipping through, we saw Bankhead and it's like, this is just like, it's, it was such a cool thing for us. Cause it's, you know, I think when people go on travels, like you talk about these trips all the time. And to see your artwork matching like our perspective of the trip, but in a better light than what we could capture ourselves sure. kind of thing. And like, sure. you know, like within <clears throat> reason, like I, I would not say I'm a photographer, but I know how to use a camera. That, Absolutely. Yeah. That's about like, that's the extent. <laughs> like I know how to, I know that I know the things to change the aperture, the shutter speed. I know all of that, but to like really the, I think a lot of that craft that you've even mentioned is that post post-production um, that is, it's, it's a, it's a steeper curve to, to kind of, uh, to get into Cause like, I mean, like the actual teaching someone to use a, a camera is one thing, but teaching them to actually, you know, have the eye to edit it is a whole different thing. Absolutely. How have you kind of built out maybe even some of your other, uh, offerings, like, like the workshops and the, the one-to-ones that allows people that maybe are listening to kind of learn photography with you? Yeah. So, um, I've always had a passion for teaching. I mean, aside from the photography, with work, I've always been a teacher and I've enjoyed that coaching in gyms over the years. And so that's another part that I kind of tie into the photography is I offer workshops. I offer the one-on-ones like you mentioned. Um, and so there's, there's two different variations to that. So the workshops are typically in field. Um, it's three to five hours we spend together, whether and the part of that's going to be in the field. So the way I typically work the workshop is uh, whoever signs up for a workshop, I'll usually give them a phone call. And we kind of discuss what are you looking for specifically? What's your actual goals that you want to achieve from attending this workshop? You know, is it, is it working with your camera, being more comfortable in composition in the field and picking my brain for what do I see and how do I compose a shot? Or is it more about the post-processing for you? You know, are you, are you good at working your camera, taking pictures, but you just don't know how to edit yet mm. or you need help with editing, right? And so we'll tailor that workshop. So it's usually two to three hours in the field. And then one to two hours post-processing. Okay. And that's usually done over Zoom. I record it and then provide them a copy so they can always refer back to anything that we worked on. And so and when we do the Zoom session, I always give them the option. I was like, we can edit one of my photographs. I can kind of show you my flow. We can edit, I can edit one of yours and show you how I'd work with your image. Or you can edit your image and I'll help you through the process. So it's however you want to go through that work, right? We can do that. And it's up to the client. And so I really make that personalized. Um, I'm getting ready to offer... In I'm still solidifying dates, but either February or March, I'm going to offer a couple of different weekends for workshops in Bankin. Um, and we'll actually have set dates for small groups to come mm -hmm. out and do a workshop. Um, and we'll do the same process. So yeah. two, three hours out in the field, work on photographing one or two different waterfalls, and then we'll have a post-processing session on the back end. And we'll all join in together on Zoom and go over that whole, the whole process of editing and my workflow. Um, but then the other part of it is I do one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions, strictly Zoom, one hour at a time. And that's just all about processing. And again, client dependent, you know, do you want me to edit one of yours? Do you want me to edit one of mine? Do you want to edit your photo? And I'll help you out and kind of work through my flow. Like, yeah. Hey, these are the things I look for. Here's my process of editing. And so we kind of really tailor it to the individual client. 
Um, because again, your client's the one paying the money for yeah. this whole thing. What do you want out mm. of this? It's not I'm not gonna dictate what this process should be for you. I'm just gonna guide you through mm. what you're looking to get. Yeah. And I I think uh, you know, I, I feel like photography is one of those things too that over the last, I would say over the last few years, and you've probably seen it as well, has really kind of become an uptick. Uh, even younger people wanting to get like, have the, the, the point and shoot cameras or have something to take where it's not their cell phone. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes, I mean, I recently just got a Fuji film, traded a Sony, uh, with a buddy of mine and got his Fuji and then he got some lens because I wanted to have that nostalgic look to photos. And it's a little bit, it's a cool camera. It looks good on the shelf. It's actually right behind you. Uh, and so (laughs) it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's been fun to kind of, but like I was on a Sony for a while. Like I had the Sony a 6,000 and then I had the Sony a seven three. 6,000 uh, is what I started on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I my, my wife still has one and the a seven three was great. I just knew for like my level of knowledge of using the camera, I was not doing it justice because it was such sure. a good camera. Sure. Uh, and so like the Fujifilm is also kind of fun. Cause it's like, you know, sometimes you get a camera, you, you take a photo and uh, it's just not what you think. Like it looked one way when you shot mm-hmm. it. And then for, for some other, like of the settings or presets you, you sat, you, like you, you put in it, it's just super fuzzy and it's like the processing and exporting. And I feel like that, that, that that's often like, you know, you want to have the ease of shooting where it's easy for the easy for your uh, clients to like go out and like feel like they can capture photos of everyday life. I I feel like that's kind of, you know, it's a good starting point for most people, but then actually like having those photos, then when they would look back on them and have that quality and have that same, uh, they remember the moment the same way they captured the moment, which is sometimes hard to do. It's extremely hard to do. And so I tell people who come in all the time, you know, to the booth at different shows and they're like, wow, that's an amazing image. I bet you have a million of these. I'm like, no, you <laughs> see what I want you to see. Yeah. I have thousands of really bad photographs that didn't turn out the way mm-hmm. I wanted them to. I only put out what I'm comfortable putting out because I'm happy with the end product. I think I've gotten better over the years in in going out and seeing a scene and visualizing what I want it to be at the end. But initially early on, that was very hard. Mm. It was very rare for me to go out and go, this is what I know it's going to look like when I'm done processing it and then have it actually be that. It was more like a blind squirrel finding a nut (laughs) every now and then, right? And so now more often I'm getting, hey, I know what this is going to be. And I'm actually getting that end product. And so it just takes time. It takes yeah. work on that post-processing. And obviously it all starts in the field. Like any photographer worth their salt will tell you, do your best to capture it right in camera out in the field. Cause you're not getting that moment back. Mm-hmm. So having your settings, right. So you're not blowing your highlights or your shadows aren't too dark, like allowing the processing software to actually recover the parts you can by having your camera settings right to begin with is, is a massive detail. Um, and so that's a lot what I work on with, with clients is, Hey, when we're out here, let's make sure we get it right here as best as possible. Mm. So that when we go to post-processing, we're really just bringing that photograph back to life. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's, the, that's one thing like I, when I first got into photography a little bit with the work I was doing and kind of have continued to get it, like dabble in it, but it's more just a passion. Like I don't really do too much of it for work, uh, was just those basics. It's like knowing, knowing where on the camera oftentimes is the hardest thing of like knowing where things are located. And that's also like, it's still been one of the biggest challenges for me as I switched from Sony is cause you, you just know where everything is. And the yeah. guy that I got the camera from, like had some like pre-saved options that were so easy to navigate that like now on the Fuji, like I have to like I have to really be conscientious of what I'm trying to shoot and what I'm trying to do with the camera in that moment, because it's not as intuitive for me as, as, as maybe a Sony would be. Sure. Um, how, so as, as, as you've been able to be in the Huntsville market and continue to get your stuff out there, this episode will probably come out around October, the beginning of October. What does sort of the rest of the year look like? I would assume, you know, the next few months are probably your heaviest, uh, busiest months as you know, holiday season comes along. People are looking for photos. People are looking for gifts. Uh, what does the next few months, uh, from when this episode's released to the end of the year look like for you? No, you're right. This is our busy time of year for the markets. Um, so coming up middle of October, the 18th Friday night, the uh, 18th of October will be in big spring for the downtown art walk. The last one of the year, uh, the end of the month, the 26th and 27th of October, I'll be in Decatur for the River Clay Fine Art Festival. And then November, I have Under the Christmas Tree, November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at the Von Braun Center, for the uh, Randolph School's Under the Christmas Tree event. Uh, fingers crossed, I'll be at the following weekend at the uh, Mid-City Holiday Market. Okay. I'm still waiting to hear back on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have those two Yule, uh, the Yule Y'all for Low Mill. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back on the Orion Chris Crindle Mart but hopefully I'll be year three there. And then I end the year at the winter solstice at low mill. Wow. So 
It's a very busy next few months for I, you. <laughs> I have a, yeah, with the exception of a holiday in there for Thanksgiving, I'm yeah. I'm pretty much booked out for the rest of the year. Yeah. So how as as like this time of the year is is heavy with markets, heavy with events. How much of this time of year are you capturing new content versus how much are you kind of you've already pre-captured a lot of content over the last you know six eight months, and these last four is just kind of delivering on those pieces. Yeah. So last year and this year, I've actually had planned fall trips to Colorado. I actually leave tomorrow morning. Oh, really? Yeah. I awesome. Leave, I leave tomorrow morning for eight days out in Colorado chasing fall colors. But where are you going to Colorado? Telluride area. Okay. Primarily. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, I've been watching all the reports. All the colors are already starting to change. <laughs> yes. so I'm just like, hold out, I please. was out. I was out in uh, Avon and Vail a couple of years ago around this time. Uh, and I have so many photos of just the yellow, yeah. like the amount of like, and I, I, I would be so excited to see some of those photos, uh, in Colorado. Cause like it's, it's, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So last year was my first trip out there end of September and, uh, before my, my holiday season kicked off. And, uh, I was like, man, my, my buddy went out with me. He's another photographer and, uh, we met some other photographers and we had a really great time. And we're like, we're going back next year. <laughs> and so that's my one trip. Uh, so really Fall for me is not about new content with the exception of this trip. Uh, these images I captured on this trip probably won't come out till next year. Okay. Um, everything I captured last fall through spring is what's being released now. Uh, I just actually last weekend released a whole bunch of new images uh, for the first time at the, the Mono Santa Art Festival. And so, uh, yeah, now to the end of the year, it's markets, it's family life, it's full-time work, mm -hmm. it's it's just run it, you know, go, go, go until, yeah. until January 1st. And then we can take a breath <laughs> yeah. and uh, reset and, and come up with a game plan for what the new year is going to be. Yeah. And so like in the episode notes for this, so if you're listening to or watching, you'll have, we'll have uh, dates, all the dates he mentioned of all the different events. I'll also have links to his Instagram and Facebook uh, and uh, links to his website as well. So if you want to find out more information about anything that we've talked about, uh, you can definitely visit that. Um, as we're, you know, obviously after when he gets the beginning of the year of 2025, it's kind of the, the reset. Um, what do you hope 2025 is and maybe some areas that you hope to uh, grow in uh, 2025? So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm planning, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna do two workshops in Bankhead. Um, probably pick a date in late February and another one in March. Uh, usually our rainy time of year, mm. the water will be flowing a little bit better. And uh, that's a great opportunity to get out to the, to the waterfalls and Bankhead and, and capture some good images. Um, but I'm hoping to add a couple more workshops later in the year. Um, so that's, that's the big thing I'm pushing towards is, is when I can officially retire from my full-time <laughs> job, uh, I want to teach right, photography workshops. And so um, I'm working with a couple of friends, other photographers to try and get some loca on location workshops across the country. Mm. Um, working on one right now. It's no, they don't have any solidified dates, but end of March, I'm um, hoping to be out in West Texas, big Bend national park to do Milky way and uh, the cactus blooms. Wow. Yeah. So great time of year and Milky way will be peaking, be nice uh, panoramic Milky ways, uh, be some late nights and early mornings. But uh, <laughs> if, if the weather cooperates, it's a good time to be in big Bend national park. So plan on some workshops, try and get that up and running. Um, working on getting some new images, obviously pros, pro, you know, process, but, uh, I have some ideas that I'm, <laughs> I'm not, uh, divulging yet. Um, just trying to get them off the ground, but, uh, there's potential for, for a show later in the year that I'm hoping to release some new images at. Awesome. And so that would be, uh, teaching is the big one though. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's, it's, I've enjoyed having you on uh, today, talking a little bit about your journey as a photographer. I continue to look forward to the impact uh, your arts uh, and your photography and your pieces are going to have not only in the Huntsville community, but I, I feel like it's all going to be all across the country because people are going to be able to hopefully see your stuff of places they visited that maybe they no longer live here, but they, you know, they are, reside in Telluride or they reside wherever it might be. Uh, but yeah, we'll have all the links, episode notes. So if you want to find out more information, but I appreciate, appreciate you being here. I appreciate it. And uh, keep an eye out to uh, Scout Guide Volume 7. I'll be in it this year. Perfect. So it's coming out October 10th. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me.